The next morning when Sean wakes up, he's able to get Dorothy into a wheelchair. This is the first time that Dorothy's mobile since the accident. They get her downstairs, and Leanne is beside herself. She yells at Sean. Sean, she's not ready for this. But Sean just looks at her and says, Leanne, it's fine. We got this. When Sean goes to grab Bev and Bobby and Leanne in a room, somebody slides a note under the door. And Dorothy takes it upon herself to grab it before Leanne does. Leanne is probably right. Dorothy isn't ready for that strain just yet because she falls out of the chair and it's pretty painful. She is, however, able to grab the note before Leanne notices. When they get in their bedroom, Dorothy and Sean open up the letter. It's addressed to them and it is, in fact, from the church. The note says, CLS has laid claim to a nearby sanctuary. We want our wayward flower back. Give us an opportunity this Thursday after dark and your family shall be left in peace. This could be the opportunity that the Turners were looking for to get rid of Leanne. Basically just giving her up to the church. While Dorothy thinks it's an absolute gift, Sean is a little more hesitant. He tells her, you know, the church wanted this before. They failed. And Dorothy says, well, they'll be better prepared this time. Dorothy really wants this to work out. She knows she has to play some kind of role in it. And while she doesn't want to outwardly hand over Leanne to the church, she wants to set them up in a situation where it's very convenient for them to grab her. So she decides to hold a cocktail party. Welcome all the new neighbors in the area to the house. And there's a lot of new neighbors. They know that this is risky. They can't let Jericho out of their sight during this party. They can't risk losing him again. And while Leanne will put up a fight about it, they'll just have Bev and Bobby distract her. They also don't want Julian getting in the way. So they get him one ticket to the Sixers game, and he has no interest in going solo. Dorothy gets serious with him and says, well, we can't have Leanne go with you. We need her here. And honestly, this thing between you guys is weird. We need to know what side you're on. Julian takes offense to it and tells them, keep your ticket. I don't know what you guys are plotting, but this is Leanne's home now. She belongs here. And Sean disputes that, saying, actually, Julian, she doesn't. This sparks a fight between the two where Julian does have a good point. He realizes that they're trying to get rid of Leanne, and he says, every time you've tried that in the past, you failed miserably. Julian doesn't want to have this conversation, though, in front of his sister. She's too far gone. He feels like he can talk to Sean about it. And what he's learning is Sean is firmly on his wife's side. Sean points out the elephant in the room, that Leanne has some kind of supernatural ability. Julian gaslights Sean, and Sean says, okay, I challenge you. Watch what happens around her in the next couple days. And if you don't feel like anything's wrong with her after these couple of days, then you can medicate me. He goes to get ready to head out to go invite these neighbors to the party, and Leanne stops him. She says, you really should be on set. And he lies, saying that there was a last-minute schedule change. But Leanne knows that it's a lie. And she says to him, in a very creepy way, You know, you really shouldn't keep secrets from me, Sean. And then she lets him go about his business. He goes door-to-door, inviting all the neighbors to the cocktail hour on Thursday. Everyone seems really receptive to it. There is a younger couple across the street who just moved in. And they do seem like they would fit the narrative of people from the church, just because they seem to be hunkering down for the apocalypse. Ironically, a chef doesn't know what a Costco trip looks like when he sees one. Either way, if they are from the church, they're exactly who Sean is looking for and exactly the kind of person that Sean wants to invite to this party. And they agree to come. That night, Dorothy and Sean are discussing their plan, how to go around the room and subtly question people on why they bought a house in the neighborhood. That's when Dorothy looks outside and Leanne is basically holding a church service in the homeless encampment. She's showing them part of her secret. She has a book, the same book that Sean's found before with weird drawings of things that have happened. And she starts ripping pages out, giving it to the homeless people, telling them, if you want something, you write it down on the piece of paper. Then the answer is going to come to you. You just have to believe that you deserve it. Dorothy can't believe that it's gotten this bad just because she hasn't been out of bed this long. She can't believe that this group has grown to this size. All this does is confirm to Dorothy that Leanne needs to get the hell out of here. The next morning, Sean wakes up, he starts making some food for this party, and Leanne walks downstairs. She grabs a butcher knife and says, Isn't it funny how some things that are so useful can be so deadly when in the wrong hands? And then she starts jabbing the butcher knife into her hand. Sean slowly takes it away from her, but he is concerned. She then starts questioning him on why he's having this party, and he uses Dorothy's lack of social interaction as the reason. Leanne, though, knows that's not true. Whether she likes it or not, that night, the party rages on. 
all the neighbors show up. A lot of people have shown up just because they're big fans of Sean. There's an older couple that seems to be really infatuated with Sean. At least the wife does, and the husband doesn't really seem to mind. But as the night goes on, they start questioning the group, one by one. If they bring up art, they question who their favorite artists are to find out if they're faking it. They start questioning their religions. They try to bring it up as if it's natural conversation, but they're really bad at this. While this party goes on, though, Leanne isn't sitting idle. She's making her way around the room and asking very similar questions to Dorothy and Sean, but she's also having some of her minions from the park rummage through neighbors' houses. She, just like the Turners, have the same questions. Which one of their new neighbors is from the church? Snake gets the answer to that. As she's in the apartment of the couple across the street, the same couple that just seemed to be going on a Costco run that piqued Sean's interest earlier, she finds a very interesting needlework. It is absolutely creepy as hell. And it says, Wash my sins with blood, anoint me with your spirit. Being a former member of the church, Snake knows what church items look like, and she knows that this couple is, in fact, from the Church of the Lesser Saints. The issue is they don't have a way to get this news to Leanne. She's still in the party, although Dorothy is trying to set it up where she gets taken. She sends Leanne outside to lock the patio gate, and the husband of that woman who was really into Sean goes outside, but he doesn't go to attack Leanne. He goes to hit on her because... Turns out this couple has a very open marriage. He felt like there was a vibe. There clearly wasn't a vibe. It's just a creepy old guy trying to get laid by a way younger girl. Dorothy actually breaks up the uncomfortable conversation when she realizes that this guy isn't taking Leanne. Leanne thanks Dorothy because, as I said, it is an uncomfortable situation. But Dorothy snaps, that wasn't to help you. And Leanne asks, why can't you just be nice to me? Dorothy gets closer into the light and says, listen to me. We do not have a relationship that needs amending. We have nothing. I've tolerated your presence only because I've had to. But I'm not an invalid anymore and I have no obligation to care about you. And trust me, I don't. They both then have to head back into the party and act like everything's normal. Dorothy and Sean, though, realize their plan isn't working. They need to do something else. That's when Dorothy comes with the idea of Sean going down in the basement and cutting the circuit breaker and give whoever needs it the opportunity to take Leanne. A couple minutes later, the whole house goes dark. Sean comes back upstairs holding lights for everybody and claims that this is a normal occurrence. It's an old house. Even after this, though, Leanne hasn't been taken, and frustration is mounting for Dorothy. She pulls Sean aside and says, can you make it any darker? But he assures her, you gotta be patient. We're so close. And Leanne overhears this. She knows the Turners are now setting her up to be taken by the church. Especially after she overhears Sean say, We did everything right. They want her. This is nearly over. Leanne's pretty mortified by this. But Sean wasn't wrong. It is nearly over. Because a few seconds later, Leanne has a bag put over her head and she's trying to be kidnapped out of there. The younger couple from across the street is trying to get her out the door, but Leanne's putting up a damn good fight. Both Dorothy and Sean see it happening, but they just allow it to happen, not intervening at all. That's when the entire house starts to shake. The cracks in the basement, they get way worse. But the cracks in the basement lead to cracks in the house. It's as if the house is on a fault line and there's an earthquake going on. Because the house is shaking, items fall from the ceiling and it hits the attackers directly on their head. It seems to finally stop when Leanne takes the hood off but not before she scares the crap out of Sean by having the chandelier fall just inches from landing directly on him. Everybody's pretty scared in the house. Julian is holding a crying Jericho, and he's cowering in the corner. He's starting to realize that what Sean said might be true. Leanne, though, is pissed off. She looks at all of them and says, We're a family. What is it going to take to make you understand that? She then walks out of the house and sees the destruction that she caused. A complete sinkhole has opened up on the street. It's huge. And Leanne seems very proud of herself. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.